Alright, so 8.6, um, just starting to think about counting things. Uh, so how do we count things? How do we make counting things easy? So to start, we're going to talk about the fundamental counting principle. Uh, and it goes like this. Let's say that you're at your closet and you see that you have three pairs of pants. And you have uh, five shirts and four pairs of shoes. Uh, you might have red pants and blue pants and white pants and a, a red shirt and a blue shirt and a white shirt and so on. And, and you could go together and or, or go through and make all the combinations you could possibly think of uh, and count all the different outfits you can make. But there's There's got to be a faster way than that. Uh, and so it turns out there is. So to help us see the fundamental counting principle and that it is true and that it makes sense, we're going to draw a little picture. It's called a tree diagram. So here's where we start. And we're going to, when we talk about uh, counting things, we speak in terms of events, which makes it sound like a much bigger deal than it actually is. Like the event that you pick pants. Usually an event is like a big party or something, but... Uh, here, the event is that you pick some pants. So, you you start at your your beginning decision point, and you have three different realities. Uh, you could pick pants number one, or in an alternate universe, you could have picked pants number two, or in yet another universe, you could have picked pants number three. So, what happens when... Pardon my pausing. Sorry. Uh, so, you've picked your pair of pants, and now what happens? Well, we pick a shirt after that. So let's pick, we, or, or say that we've, uh, we come down this path that we've picked pants number one. Well, after we've done that, what do we do? We pick we pick a shirt. And how many ways can we do that? We can pick one of five shirts. Well, what if we hadn't picked pants? What would we pick pants two? Well, there's still five choices of shirt. And if we had picked pants three, there's five choices from there. Okay, so that's the event that we pick a shirt. Now, now for the final event, the main event of picking shoes. If we picked pants one and shirt one, we could pick shoes one or shoes two or shoes three or shoes four. If we picked pants one and shirt two, we could have picked any of these four shoes. So at any end of any branch that represents having picked pants and shirt, you then have four more choices of shoes. And so... I'm going to stop talking so I can do this a little more quickly. So the question of how many outfits can you make is the same as how many branches do you see here all the way out to the right of this tree diagram? Well, there's four right at the end. There's, there's four at the end of each of these branches. And how many branches are, are there? Well, you've got uh, four branches per, and then you have... Uh, five branches off of each of these three branches, so you have three uh, times five times four. You have three groups of five groups of four. Uh, so the fundamental counting principle, we'll, we'll just shorten it to FCP, fundamental counting principle says whatever the, the number of ways an event can happen, let's say that event one can happen m ways and uh, event two can happen n ways, and event three can happen uh, q ways or whatever. Then we could just multiply all of those ways together to find out how the, all of those events can happen together. And uh, these events were pants, shirt, shoes, and all together. Let's see. It looks like there's three times five is fifteen times four. That'd be sixty outfits in this scenario. So we will dispense with 
uh, more examples of specifically just the fundamental counting principle, we'll start applying it to uh, other scenarios where we want to count things. So uh, here's a specific counting kind of problem. Let's say that you have uh, 50 songs on your iPod. Okay, or any other MP3 player. And you tell it you want to shuffle. How many ways can it shuffle all of your songs? It's going to shuffle them at random. It's going to randomly play a song. Uh, so it'll play the first song, and it'll play the next song, and the next, and all the way down until it's played all 50 of your songs. So let's use the fundamental counting principle to count how many ways your iPod can shuffle these songs, put them in a specific, different, unique order. Um, so we'll look at the event that it chooses your first song, the song that goes that gets played first. Uh, so any of the 50 songs will do. The next, it's programmed not to play the same song twice, so long as you don't have the same song on there twice. Um, so it's not going to play the same file twice, so it can't play this song, but any of the other songs will do, and there's 49 left. And so the next choice, the next event, the event that it puts together your third song, uh, is going to happen in one of any 48 ways. Come all the way down through the next one would be 47 possibilities and so on until we get to the end and here we would have three songs left to choose from, two songs left to choose from, and we only have one choice for the last song. So that would be the fundamental counting principle applied to this, this specific problem. And when you take a bunch of stuff, like all of your songs, and you order them in all the different orders you can possibly order them in. Um, that's called permutations. When you reorder a set of things, that's called a permutation. And if, for example, I'll, I'll look at a different uh, set of things, so I'll just draw a little line over here. Here's a, a set of three letters, A, B, and C. And I will permute them, that's the verb, permute these letters so that I have a different permutation or a different order. Okay, So permutation, just think orderings. orderings. Permutations would be the same as orderings. But permutations is the, the word we use in math, so that's the one you should get used to using. And so that's some, some vocab, permutations, orderings. And now for a, a little uh, notation if you want to find the all the different permutations of 50 things, you're going to wind up doing five times or uh, 50 times 49 times 48, and all the way down to one. If we want to find out all the orderings of A, B, and C, we could choose any of those three letters for the first position, and any of the two remaining letters, and then we just have one letter left. Uh, and any permutation is going to be like that. The number of things in the the set. And we just start at that number and multiply by the numbers before it. So in this instance, this represents what we have written up here, 50 times 49 times 48 all the way down. And that's read 50 factorial. So if you want to fit in at your next math party, make sure you say this factorial. And you don't say 50 exclamation mark. And you don't just yell 50 really loud. Uh, it's 50 factorial. And so over here, this would be 3 factorial. And if we had 7 people, if we had, ooh, let's stop at 5. 5 is enough already. So if we had 5 people, and we were taking a photograph of these 5 people, and we wanted to know how many different ways could we have them stand, we could have them stand from oldest to youngest, and tallest to shortest, and uh, funniest to least funny, uh, whatever, uh, any ordering. How many different orderings are there? Well, there's here this first guy. Well, there's five choices for that first person, four choices for the next, as long as it's not this guy. Anybody else will do three, two, and one. That'll, using the fundamental counting principle, we'll multiply all those numbers together. That will be 5 factorial. Okay, That's what 
that represents what's happening over here so that we don't have to write so much down. So let's see. This is uh, 20, 60, 120. 120 different ways for five people to stand in a row. Amazing. Okay. Next. Let's look at a, a, a set of letters like we did with A, B, and C, but here's, a, here's something different about this set of letters. Um, what you'll notice is that some of the letters are the same. Okay, but let's not think about that quite yet. Uh, and let's just clear up that a word, we'll say a word is a thing that is just a collection of letters. So let me give you an example of another word I could make with these letters. Abnana. Now, that doesn't mean anything in English, but it is a word, because it's a collection of letters, so we'll just call it a word. It's kind of a nonsense word, but there you go. So let's count all the different unique uh, orderings, or words, that we can make. All the unique words we can make. Um, well, you might think there's six letters, so six factorial. And that's a good start. Only six factorial... Uh, I'm going to start talking about 6 factorial like it was a person or a program or, you know, and the way that it thinks and the things that it does uh, and the things that it overdoes. So just get ready for that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have you look at this word, abnana, and I'm going to color this one red so you can see this word the way 6 factorial sees it. 6 factorial is treating all of these things as different things. Just like 5 factorial saw all these people as different people when we were saying we're going to have them stand in a row for a picture. Uh, so every word that you make, 6 factorial looks at it and says, well, I'll make a new word out of that word by reordering the ends. And so I'll put the red N over here. Aha, now I have a different word. But really, in, in English, it's not a different word. It's the same word. N is here, and N is here, and in this word, N is here, and N is here, and it's no different, but 6 factorial sees it as different. Uh, so every word that you see, you could do that. I could, I could draw a red N here, and then I could switch the red N. And any other letter or any other word that you make, uh, you could make uh, Nabana, right? Put an N over there. and uh, So let, let's say that we did that. Let's write that one here. Nabana. You say, okay, that's a different one. Uh, but 6 factorial is a little childish and naive. And says, well, I'm going to make a new word, and I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to put this N over here, and now I have a new word. But you, knowing better than 6 factorial, you say, no, 6 factorial, you're a little silly. That's not a different word, that's the same word. This N is the same as this N. It has the same meaning. Uh, it speaks the same sound. And this Nabana isn't any different than this Nabana. So, 6 factorial, every word that you are, are counting, it's counting it twice for all the ways that it can rearrange N. So you have to fix that. You, you have twice as many words as you need. So we're going to take 6 factorial, we're going we're gonna to augment it a little bit, and we're going to divide it by the number of ways you can reorder the N's within any word. And you can order two things in two factorial ways. Okay. Now let's look at the A's. We have three A's. Let's say we make one of these A's a black A. We'll leave one green and we'll make the other a yellow A. Okay, so now I have the same problem for six factorials. Even six factorial over two factorial is having this problem. Now it's not reordering the ends. But it still sees the A's. It doesn't realize the A's are the same, so it would say, well, let's just uh, we'll move the green A over there, and here's, and we'll put the black A right there, and we'll even leave the yellow A where it is. And there's your new word. But again, uh, even 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial is recounting all the words over and over and over for all the ways that you can reorder the A's. It's treating the A's as different things. And it's counting them a lot. More. There's a lot more ways to rearrange those A's. How many different ways can you arrange those A's? Well, you have this position and this position and this position, and you have three A's to fill them. 
So if we were to take these A's out and put in our hand and, and we would you know, choose out of our hand the A's that we were going to put down, we would have three A's we could put here, then two of the remaining A's could be chosen to go here, and the last one would go here. So in any of the words that we make, banana, nabana, abnana, the A's could be reordered in how many? Three factorial ways. Okay. Uh, so we have, uh, we've overcounted all of the words that we can make by three factorial. We have three factorial times too many, or six times too many um, words. For every word, we could rearrange the A's in six different ways. So I could actually rearrange these differently colored A's six different ways, but I would only have one word, one unique word. So then because of the three repeated A's, we're going to divide by the three factorial so that we're not recounting those words six different times, three factorial different times. Uh, so for sets of things with repeated uh, elements, or this word that has repeated n's and repeated a's for all the repeated things, we have to divide those uh, repeated things out. Let's do a, a little bit of a, a crazier example uh, that has lots of repeated letters. Mississippi. All right. So let's go to town on this one. Well, uh, the easiest thing to do would be to say if they were all different, we just count them. So 4, 8, 9, 10, 11 factorial. That would be great if they were all different, but they're not. We're over counting the possible words we can make by rearranging these letters. Uh, for instance, there's these two P's for every arrangement, in particular this one. We could just switch the P's. Uh, and that's the way 11 factorial sees it, is switches these P's and says, haha, a new word, but in, de in fact it's not. So for those two P's, we have to divide by 2 factorial because we, if we didn't, we would have twice as many words as we needed. Uh, also, we have 4 S's, so we're going to divide by 4 factorial for the 4 S's. And you have 4 I's, you've got to divide by 4 factorial for the 4 factorial different ways there are to reorder those I's. Okay, And so it goes for any set of things that has repeated things. So this has repeated S's, repeated I's, repeated P's. you got to divide those guys out. Uh, to find unique arrangements. Okay, so we've talked about reordering or permuting or finding all the permutations of all of the stuff in a set, okay? Um, now, what I, you know, something that would be different is um, let's say six people um, draw these people. Six people are going to run in a race. They are in the best of shape, as you can see. There's six people, and they're going to run in a race. But what we've done before is, is to ask a question like this. We would say, how many ways can this race turn out? Uh, this guy could come in first, then this guy in, uh, in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or any other order of these six people, or six factorial. Six factorial would be the way that all of the all the possible races that could happen. But with races, we usually don't look at the people who come in last, which is just a, a shame. It's sad for those people. But it's the truth. We really care about the top three, with the blue ribbon and the whatever the other ribbons are. I think the gold, silver, and the bronze medals maybe would work better. We just care about those top three most of the time. So how many ways are for those top three finishers to come into the top three? We could look at it the way we, we have before, which is the fundamental counting principle. Uh, the event that someone comes in first, second, third. There's six people. Uh, you know, there, until every until somebody finishes, any of the six people could come in first. Well, once somebody's coming first, only five people are left to come in second, and then four people are left to come in third. And so that would be six times five times four would be how many ways the top three places could be filled. Uh, another way to look at it is what if we we started with 6 factorial, 6 times 5, times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Here, these top three are the ones that we care about, and we don't care about these last three. How can we get rid of those? We can just divide by 3 times 2 times 1. And so these would all cancel out, and you would get your 6 times 5 times 4, which you can come up with kind of intuitively. Uh, it's helpful, though, to think of it as 6 factorial over 3 factorial, because now we can start to do much larger sets of things. Um, 
for instance, um, what if there's, uh, I don't know, 30 basketball teams? And they, they all compete in some tournament. And we actually would like to know, out of those 30 teams, teams, who was in the top 10? The 10 is a lot of events. If we, if we just went about this intuitively, we would just say, well, any of the 30 teams could be first, and then the second place, and third, and all the way down. We would go all the way down to, to what? We go 29, uh, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 21, right? All the way down to... 2 times 21, and then that would be it. That's what we would want to do, but that's such a pain to uh, go 30 times 29 in those 10 positions. But if we instead thought, let's just take 30 factorial, which is 30 times every number before it, and we'll just divide out those ones we don't want. If we want the top 10, we don't care about the bottom 20. Uh, so we'll divide this by 20 factorial. That'll cancel out all the, the 20, 19, 18, 17, all the way down to 1. And now we just have this, uh, if we know how to use our calculators, um, we have this easy formula to follow. We can tell the calculator, th calculator 30 factorial over 20 factorial, and it'll give us a number, a really, really big number. Okay. So that has a, a notation. For this example, we want to take 10 things out of 30 things and reorder them. We want to find all the permutations of those 10 out of 30 things. So out of 30 things, we want to permute 10 of them. Permute, remember, means to reorder. So out of 30 things, we want to permute 10 of them. And uh, if we were to write a formula, we would say it would be 30. And how would we find that other number where we just take uh, 30 minus the number that we care about? And that would give us the bottom number that we want to get rid of. So 30 minus 10 factorial. Or, in general, if you had n things and you want to permute r of those things, in this case, n is 30 and r is 10, we would just take n factorial. Right? That would be if we, if we cared about all of them. But we, in this case, we don't. And we would just say, well, let's find out what the rest of it would be, what would give us that, that bottom tail piece, and that we would... Uh, be able to divide those out. But we just take n minus r, that would give us the, the rest, and we divide out the rest, leaving just the top r. Okay, So that's npr, that's how many permutations there are of r things out of n things. Okay, And now, very similarly to this, what if we wanted to know how many poker hands there are. Let's say we're playing five card draw. Um, so you get dealt five cards. Whoa, this is going to look so good. OK, you get dealt five cards. But the thing about these five cards is it's not like they're the top five best cards. It, in short, it doesn't matter what order they're in. If you get a, a, a king. 8, uh, 7, 6, ace. It's, it's for one, it's a bad hand. Uh, and it doesn't matter if instead, let's get rid of that, instead you got the ace first and then the six, because when you, when you, if you know something about playing cards, you can just put the six over in front of the ace and you have exactly what it was before. So the order is not important. If order is not important, This is a phrase that's used a lot in counting. Order is important, or, or order is not important, or order is important. In permutations, that's what a permutation is. It's an order. It's a reordering. So if in permutations, order is important. In combinations, that's what these are, order is not important. It doesn't matter if you get the king, eight, seven, eight, your king, eight, seven, ace, six, or 6, 7, 8, ace, king, it's all the same hand. So regardless of what the order is, uh, you know, it's the same thing no matter what. So how many, how many hands can you make out of a deck of cards? Well, there's 52 cards. Um, 52 cards in a deck, not counting jokers. 
so how many hands are there without regard to order uh, out of those 52 cards? Let's kind of start at the same place we did with uh, permutations and say, what if we started with all 52 cards? Okay, well that would be how you could order all 52 cards and all the possible orderings. All right, But then when we, we talk about permutations of some of those things, not all of those things, but then we would divide this by 47, because that would be 52 minus 5. Okay, so what do we have here? We have how many hands you can make if, in a poker hand, it mattered what order your cards were in. Um, you know, what what order they were dealt to you. It matters what order they're in. It, you know, it's important to, you know, if you have a run, it, you show that they're in order or whatever. But even if you put them down in, in the wrong order, it's still a run or a straight. A straight. I, I don't play poker much. I play more uh, games with runs in them, like phase 10 or something. Anyway. Uh, 52 minus or 52 factorial over 47 factorial would be how many five card hands there are if it mattered what order they were given to you, but it doesn't in poker. So this uh, is with respect to order, and and how many ways can you order those five cards once you have them, uh, which we don't care about. We don't care about how many ways you can order them, but you can order them five factorial ways. And that's what this is counting. It's counting all the orders that these five things could be in. But we that's only one hand. That five factorial, that huge number five factorial, uh, 120, all 120 of those hands are the same hand. So for every hand that you can make, this is counting it five factorial too many times. Um, so if we divide that out, divide out all those orderings, we count all 120 as the true thing is as they're just one hand, right? We divide that hand that is can be arranged in five factorial ways by five factorial to make it represent just a single hand, okay? Um, so let's make up a really uh, contrived uh, example. So you have ten friends, and you're gonna just you know, you love them all equally. And you can't, you just can't pick uh, who to take to the movies with you. So you decide on there's going to be three of them. You're going to choose them at random. So how many ways could you pick that group of three friends? And it doesn't matter who you pick first, second, or third. You're all just going to go to the movies together. Uh, so it will be the same as this situation. You're picking or choosing. Let's use the word choose. You're choosing three of them. Uh, but it doesn't matter the order because you just it's just three friends. Uh, it's the same kind of thing here. You're picking five cards out of 52 cards. It'd be like you're picking five friends out of 52 friends. It's the same kind of a situation. So if we did 10 factorial, it'd be the order of all 10 friends in all orders they could be. And then if we divided that by 7 factorial, that'd be the way that we could choose three friends and then the, take those three friends and, and line them up in a row. How many different rows could we make of those three friends? But we don't care about the order of the friends, so we're going to divide it by the number of ways you can arrange three things, which is three factorial. All right. Now, you may go on uh, in your life to just memorize this formula or even not memorize this formula and use your calculator and remember when order matters and when it doesn't. But I would hope that you gain a little bit of intuition about you know, what makes some sense of these numbers, uh, why it works. Um, but as permutations had a, a, a notation, this has a notation too. Uh, this guy here, this example of the cards, would be 52 C. C stands for combinations, but a lot of times, most of the times, we say choose, because uh, apparently choose has no regard to order. We're going to choose five of them with no regard to what order it, they're in. So if we were to choose five things from 52 things without caring what order they're in, which is what C means, we don't care what order they're in, uh, we call those combinations. I'll write that word here. A combination of things is just those things. It doesn't matter what order they're in. That would be the formula for that one. This would be, uh, be the formula for uh, 10 friends that you're choosing three from. There you go. Or in general, we've got NCR and a 
up top in the numerator, we'd have n factorial. And then down here, we'd have n minus r factorial, just like npr up there you know, on the screen above this. Uh, but also, we want to discount all the different orderings there are of r things, those r things that we're choosing. So we will also divide by r factorial. And so what you'll notice is that these two numbers should always add up to this number up here. So 7 and 3 should be 10, 47 and 5 should be 52, and so on. So that is a quick rundown of um, the fundamental counting principle of permutations and of combinations. And in there is just a, a couple of specific kinds of permutations. Um, so I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.